This video is sponsored by Magellan TV. When Saddam Hussein realized that the Iraqi Air Force was not equipped to openly engage with the coalition air forces, he ordered the evacuation of his prized aircraft arsenal. However, the remaining MiG-15 Fox Bats of the service were not shelved. Instead, they were used as a last effort to target the heavily guarded Iran-Iraq border, protected by numerous models of the famed F-15 Eagle, the Fox Bats' ultimate American enemy. The Air Battle of Samura, Iraq's last offensive before grounding their aircraft during the Gulf War, featured an epic showdown between the two most epic Cold War-era jet fighters. Over 30 years after the battle, it's still unclear if that was the first and only time the iconic twin-engine all-American F-15 fighter has ever been shot down. Operation Samora was the Iraqi Air Force's last attempt to break a wall of U.S. Air Force F-15s pinning them in at the Iranian border. But it wouldn't be the last time Saddam Hussein squared off against American forces. Learn more in the Magellan TV documentary Thunder Run on Baghdad, featuring previously unaired footage of the Iraq War and the U.S. invasion that finally brought Saddam Hussein down. Magellan TV is a new type of documentary streaming membership created by filmmakers that brings over 3,000 documentaries to all your devices without interruption. Visit try.magellantv.com slash dark skies or click the link in the description below to get a free one month trial. Check out the Magellan TV documentary Thunder Run on Baghdad, among other features and series across genres such as war and military, science and technology, and travel and adventure. Support Dark Skies and check out Magellan TV with your one month free trial today. Even more new programs are being added on a weekly basis. Click on the link in the description below or visit try.magellantv.com slash dark skies. The Fox Bat and the Eagle. During the Cold War, the Soviet MiG-25 Fox Bat supersonic interceptor and the American F-15 Eagle all-weather tactical fighter became mortal enemies. Both were recognized as the most capable, reliable, and deadliest air-to-air -air combat aircraft in the world. Despite the high status they both held, these rivals had very different designs. The Soviet Fox Bat entered service in 1970. At 75,000 pounds, it was heavier than any of the fighter jets in its class. Because of its size, the aircraft required more fuel, but could also carry larger weapons and fly higher and faster than any of its kind. The Fox Bat was explicitly designed to deploy the R-40 missile, the most powerful of its time. Furthermore, the Fox Bat, just like many other Cold War era planes, was adapted for different roles, such as suppression of enemy air defenses and radiation sampling to closely monitor the Chinese nuclear program. The American Eagle entered service six years after the Fox Bat. It was initially intended as a heavy model at 44,000 pounds and lasted a long time in the development process because engineers at McDonnell Douglas designed it specifically to tackle the Fox Bat. The F-15 Eagle was explicitly designed for air-to-air -air combat with a secondary air-to-ground roll. Even though it lacked the space to store munitions like the R-40, it could still launch the AIM-7 missiles, which were the standard for American fighters of the era. The Eagle compensated from these flawed missile capabilities with a more extended range, the ability to take off successfully from shorter runways and in shorter amounts of time, and overall superior short-range fighting capabilities. These strengths just happened to be the Fox Bat's Achilles heel. Evacuation The most notable engagement between the two giant jets occurred in 1991 during Operation Desert Storm, the Gulf War's combat phase. By January 19th, it became apparent to Iraqi leaders that they could not openly engage with the coalition air forces. Thus, Saddam Hussein ordered that the Iraqi air assets be conserved inside guarded bunkers to save them for a future battle against the coalition. Consequently, the coalition began to plan sorties targeting these aircraft hangars to destroy the Iraqi air force arsenal. In just 10 days, over 117 Iraqi airplanes were destroyed on the ground. Alarmed, Hussein ordered his aircraft be evacuated to Iran temporarily to be used in later sorties. But Iraq's military aircraft that tried to escape the country encountered a wall of eagles flying nearby the Iran-Iraq border, which shot down any enemy airplane. The F-15 Eagles had been established there by the coalition, Iraq's counterpart in the war, consisting of the United States, the United Kingdom, France, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Kuwait, and the Iraqi Kurdistan region. The Iraqi Air Force's MiG-25 Foxbat squadrons were not included in Hussein's mandated evacuation protocol. Soon, the Foxbat and the Eagle engaged in battle. 
On January 17th, a unit of Eagles engaged with two MiG-25s, firing ten of their missiles at the Foxbats. The heavily outnumbered Soviet exported jets used their unmatchable speed to return to base safely. Two days later, another set of Eagles engaged another group of Foxbats at a closer range and neutralized them both. After losing almost 60% of their Foxbat arsenal in the Coalition sorties, the remaining models were set to participate in the Iraqi Air Force's last effort to engage the famed F-15 Eagles, Operation Samura. Showdown The plan for Operation Samura involved coordinating the flights of two Foxbats from different directions into an isolated group of Eagles at the Iran-Iraq border. If the Eagles from the group were to counterattack one of the Foxbats, the other would fly into a flank position, downing the Eagle. While monitoring the Coalition's airborne early warnings and F-15 frequencies, the Iraqi Air Force waited for days for the right time to perform the operation. Finally, on January 30th, an Iraqi intelligence tower unit intercepted usable Coalition communications. One of their patrols, Xerx-31, approached the minimum fuel required for a comfortable flight, which meant the aircraft needed an hour-and-a-half round trip to the nearest aerial tanker. This meant that by then, only two F-15 Eagles were left in the area. One was piloted by USAF Captain Thomas Dietz, and the other by First Lieutenant Robert Heeman. Seizing this opportunity, the two chosen MiG-25s had to fly as soon as possible from their respective bases. The first, piloted by Captain Mahmoud Awad, took off from Kadesia Air Base. The other Foxbat, piloted by Captain Mohammed Jassi As Samari, took off from Tamus Air Base. After initially engaging a false target, both Iraqi pilots were directed to Dietz and Heman by their air traffic control unit. The four jets immediately engaged each other. Captain Heman fired two missiles, one of which failed to detonate. Simultaneously, As Samari achieved a radar lock-on with Heman and fired one of the famous R-40 missiles, which went ballistic when As Samari was forced into several evasive maneuvers to avoid Heman's fire. The R-40 damaged Heeman's left engine, but his eagle was still flyable. Meanwhile, Dietz engaged with Awad and attempted to fire several missiles at him. But after three failed attempts, Awad got a radar lock on to the eagle. Dietz then tried to head east and disengage. Awad, now unoccupied, fell under Heeman's lock on, who fired a missile at his aircraft. When Awad fired back, Heeman managed to avoid getting hit by using his chaff and flares. Asamari and Awad then disengaged Heeman and headed west in full speed with the afterburners on, back to the Tamuz airbase. Retaliation The F-15 Eagle that had flown to the aerial tanker had monitored the entire air battle. Pilots Lt. Col. Randy Bigham and 1st Lt. Lynn Broom decided to fly their Eagles to intercept the MiG-25s that had attacked their fellow pilots. However, a crosswind forced them to fly above Baghdad, which was the most heavily defended airspace in the country. Bigham and Broom were engaged by Iraqi gunners. Bigham later admitted that he overlooked the drift because he and his partner were determined to score a Foxbat kill in retaliation for the previous attack. Despite the lock-on, they managed to spot Al Samari and Awad and fired a missile at each of them, but missed. Bigham fired another rocket at Awad, but the Iraqi pilot managed to land his aircraft safely before it hit. Bigham then fired again at Al Samari as he was on his final landing maneuver, but lost the radar lock by the time Al Samari landed. The missile impacted the ground, only 10 feet away from Asamari's left wingtip. Bigham and Broom then left the area as fast as possible, since the Iraqi gunners were still targeting them. They made it back to their base safely. Confirmed kill. After the air battle, the Iraqi Air Force initially credited Captain Asamari with a possible victory. However, after a Bedouin smuggler discovered wreckage close to the area where the Iraqi radars lost track of an eagle, the Iraqi Air Force upgraded the incident to a confirmed victory. Later, official Iraqi documents claimed that not one, but two F-15 Eagles were shot down during Operation Samura. However, there are no records of an F-15 being shot down in the West Baghdad area on January 30th. The Air Battle of Samura was the last offensive strategy done by the Iraqi Air Force during the Gulf War. By February, all IRAF activity ceased, as the Coalition asserted their dominance in the sky. Not a single offensive sortie was even attempted during the ground phase of the war. After the Gulf War, the surviving MiG-25s continued to serve the Iraqi Air Force for 12 more years, until the 2003 invasion of Iraq. 
Dietz and Heeman became the highest scoring fighter pilots of the Gulf War, with three air-to-air -air kills each by the end of the war. Both Bigham and Broom finished the war with no air-to-air -air kills, with the Samora air battle being the closest they would get to a downing. Whether the rumors about the Eagles downing are true or not, one thing is sure. Operation Samora was the closest an F-15 has ever come to being shot down in air-to-air -air combat. The Verdict Even though the F-15 Eagle had a slightly better flight record, ultimately, the Fox Bat and the Eagle were worthy adversaries. And although similar, their fates couldn't be more different. The F-15 has just completed 45 years of service in the U.S., where it has been produced in different variants. The air-to-air -air combat fighter has been exported to three other countries as well. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, the end of the MiG-25 followed suit. Aircraft technology development funding was halted for years, and the Foxbat was never modernized at the same rate as the Eagle. Over time, the MiG-25 Foxbat was slightly upgraded with newer air-to-air -air missiles, sensors, and avionics. Though by the mid-1990s, the Foxbat was replaced by newer Russian designs, such as the Su-27 Flanker Supermaneuverable Fighter and the MiG-31 Foxhound, usually referred to as the Super Foxbat. Had there been no Foxhounds or Flankers, the Foxbat would likely have followed a similar course to the F-15. If it had been continuously modernized over the following decades, the iconic Eagle Foxbat enmity probably would have lasted a few more decades, even beyond the Cold War.